Rick, good to see you. Good morning, Keith. Nice to see you, buddy. Good, good. The topic for this podcast is being calm, peaceful, and serene are superpowers. You go. <laughs> okay, give me a minute here. Okay, um, I think when I hear those three words, calm, peaceful, and serene, what that makes me think of is how being balanced and how being unfazed by external circumstances feels so good. A very, very tough place to be when things are weighing down on you. But the reality is, as we said many times, you can always control your reaction. It just takes practice. You can always control how you react to the external stimuli. Somebody saying something negative about you, an offhanded comment that is not true, an opinion that another has that's different than yours, you all of those things give you an opportunity to do the practice and if you want to be peaceful and you want to be calm and you want to be serene for me what i have to do is i have to let go of being right that's number one and number two i have to let go of having an opinion why do i need to have an opinion because that opinion may be the thing that actually causes me the tension that takes away the peacefulness takes away the calmness takes away the serenity and by that, uh, let me give you an example. If I believe that because you have certain views, that you and I are completely different and you're not even human, um, that opinion I have, to, I have to honor. And at the same time I'm honoring that, I'm pushing someone else away. I'm almost developing a tension or a, a clenched way of thinking about the other person that's the opposite of peace and serenity. So I guess... Uh, for, for me, the, the thing that I'm always trying to work on is peaceful, calm, serenity is where I want to be. And I want to be around people who are like that. I don't want to be around people who are arguing and fighting and making other people wrong. I, I don't want that. I have enough of that in my professional life. So when I'm talking about being peaceful, calm, and serene, I'm talking about focusing on the present moment, not being involved in, in the future, not living my future life and worrying about all the damn things that could happen or think, feeling guilty about the past where there's something I said at a dinner party that was totally off color. It went down the wrong way and now those people won't talk to me. It's in the past. Um, and so I guess the present moment is the key and it's also the idea of not judging and giving yourself a break for God's sakes. You know, we have so much stimulation in this world from the electronics to the close proximity with which we work every day with our coworkers uh, to the busyness that we have in our personal lives with our spouses and our kids. The relaxation is the lost art. Relaxation, that is really, really important. And that comes with, I think, being mindful of and making choices about being physically fit. So you have that part of your day reserved. You're going to work on your physicality. You're going to work on your health. And then you're going to relax, I think, a little bit better. And also, I think we can find inner peace as we develop more and more of a capacity to have the inner peace. When you don't have it, it's hard to find that first little entree into that area. But once you start to get in there, you see that, boy, I don't have to get worked up about this or that. I don't have to feel like I'm uh, stressed by that. Again, it's a choice. And I guess I just conclude by saying my mind, <laughs> my mind is like a ah, mad monkey, right? It's going to say any damn thing it wants to. It's just going to go anywhere I want to go and where I don't want to go as a, as a human, but it, where it wants to go to protect me or to, um, it, it, you know, to make comments about things. And it's, it's the wrong way for me to live. I've got to remember that I am the mind behind the monkey. I am not, not that mind that is the mad monkey. I'm something behind that. The, the, my mind is a 
computer, it's a tool. And it absolutely is not the thing that runs me. It's something else that's more mystical and magical, and I can't even tell you what it is. But the mind is not me. Anyway, those are a few thoughts I have. Um, I, I, I'm constantly trying to explore how I can change myself, uh, ch change my relationship uh, with what I desire so that I can connect with that innermost part of me that doesn't need anything. Rick, I love that. Yeah, you know, being calm, peaceful, and serene as superpowers. I love the, that. And that's definitely something that, um, you know, working toward that every single day and using every moment to experience those three states is super important to me. And you mentioned something about the people in your life in a, in, uh, a, a different podcast, the people you cross paths with who live that way. Mm -hmm. And I think for people that are struggling, like, you know, with my life and the way it is and the, the card I've, I've been dealt or, you know, uh, whatever they may be, how can one be calm and peaceful? If you look around, there's somebody who's had a similar situation like yours or worse. And there are examples of people who, who, who can show you who who can show you who are exactly that calm, peaceful, and serene with those same hardships or more. And I, you know, think about that when I am up in arms about something internally, even though I may not show it outwardly, when I'm up in arms about something like that, I start to think about someone who's handled something similar to that and done it peacefully. So much so that you wouldn't even know that it's going on for them. Like, how do they do that? I mean, and it starts with simple things. If you listen, you will listen to a lot of people in Arizona in the summertime complain about the heat. We got plenty of them. Look for the person who spends a lot of time out there who doesn't complain about it. Are they not feeling the heat? They feel it the same way you do. They're humans. They just don't make it a problem inside. You look at people that are having difficult, have, having challenges within their household. Maybe there's a kid who's suffering. Maybe there's some kind of health issue. Some people will make it all about them. And you would think they're the ones who are ill when it's another loved one with the way they carry on and whatnot. But then you'll see the loved one who's actually experiencing it. And you're like, are they sure they got her test right? Because <laughs> <laughs> she's handling this like, like amazingly, right? Mm -hmm. and, and you see that, you know, as an African-American person, People are like, man, aren't you bothered by what's going on? Like what's what's happened when we've had some situations in the country to where people have been discriminated against or, or abused? And like, yeah, of course I see what's going on. I'm a human being. But I have the same kind of level of empathy and compassion for a suffering of someone who's African-American as every human being on the planet. Mm -hmm. Mine doesn't have like I feel more for a black person than I do for another person who's suffering or experienced suffering. It's the same. But the way that I do it is, is I don't want to contribute to more suffering in the world. So how do I best do that? Be loving and kind to everybody. Give everybody grace and forgiveness. Now, I didn't magically come up with that. I saw examples of people that did it <laughs> and have done it <laughs> and continue to do it. Like, I want to follow that path, Rick. And when people say, man, the world is so dark, really? I see a world that's full of light and hope and beauty. Mm -hmm. And I think about this great quote, and I'll end with this, about how do you become a person who makes being peaceful, calm, and serene who you are, your superpower? You start to pick the small things and you practice with those. Well, you know, some people are like, well, I need to see somebody who looks like me or who's had a similar experience as me for me to know that it's possible. Well, they're all around you. And, and, but if you're not oriented to seeing them, you will miss them. So Mr. Rogers, who is, I guess, a, a symbolic mm. of being calm and peaceful in a world uh, that seemingly isn't that way. Well, he tells this story that when he was a small child, he would watch, he would watch the news and then that night have nightmares. And his mom wanted to explain to him about it. He's like, mom, I'm having nightmares about this. It's such a scary world out there. 
you know, with all the people being hurt and suffering and there's all these catastrophes and disasters that are, that are happening. She said, here's what will help you. In each one of those situations, there are people that are helping others. Look for the helpers. And if you look for the helpers, you will find examples of people that are incredible superheroes in crisis. They're everywhere. They're running into burning buildings. They're caring for the ill and the infirm. They are being loving and kind when others aren't. Mm -hmm. their, rhetoric, their rhetoric is one of peace. Their message is one of peace where everyone else is talking about division. They're all around you. You just don't see them. They're in plain sight. And so that's what I started doing, Rick. I started to be like, I'm looking for that person. That's my tribe. And more than that, how do I become that person? I want to be that person. And so that's what I'm working on, Rick. So I love you. You want to send us out with a closing thought? Oh, Keith, that's, uh, that's astounding. I love that Mr. Rogers story. Look for the helpers. Oh, man, that is so powerful. Really, really wonderful. Thanks for sharing that, Keith. That's a, that's a glorious way to look at life. Look for the helpers. Thank you, Rick. I love you. I love you, buddy. Take care. I'll see you next time. Thank you. Thank you.